Hi everybody, I hope you are all well. Um, I've just done my video about my holiday and new books and such that I got, so now I'm moving on to uh, the uh, book reviews that I have to give you. Yes, reviews, because uh, in the time that I've been away, when I've been on holiday in a combination of being ill and, you know, uh, catching up with work and all that lot, I have gotten through a couple of books. So you are getting two reviews today. You heard it here first. Um, so the first one is what I'm here to review, which is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. So I took this to Stratford-upon-Avon with me. I hardly read anything in Stratford-upon-Avon because I was just so, I was doing various other things and I kept on being distracted and, uh, and all that lot. So it kind of, the bulk of it got read when I got home but unfortunately when I got home I then came down with a stinking cold um <laughs> so it was like ah that's frustrating so that's why I wasn't able to get the review to you last weekend for it um because I was just too ill to to um to do it so it would I mean I could have done it but it wouldn't have been a pre-review and probably would have only like said one actual constructive thing <laughs> and probably keep on repeating myself or something because I was just yeah I was not not well at all last weekend um but I am here now and I'm feeling much better so the Essex Serpent is Sarah Perry's second book uh I, bel I think she's only got three maybe four books out now uh and it's from 2016 uh, this book and this book was everywhere oh my god and still to this day you cannot get away from like a buy one get one half price offer in Waterstones or any other place without this being there um it is still very prominent and it was it, it was a massive massive hit it won you know various awards and everything so I was quite excited to actually read it and I actually I think I got it in a buy one get one half price offer from what I can remember in Waterstones years ago um but I never got around to it until now so the Essex Serpent is set in 1853 and follows a woman called Cora. Cora um, had a, an abusive husband who has now died and she has a son uh, with her husband and they have a nanny who, looked up, who looks after her son. And the three of them go off on holiday to Colchester and they discover while they're there this tale of the Essex serpent, this kind of local legend of this serpent that, that haunts, as it were, the area. And um, Cora believes that he's actually a prehistoric animal that has survived every everything and is like hidden away as it were uh in its safe place and occasionally it comes out saying look kind of like the Loch Ness monster and uh she meets a a, a priest who lives in the area uh called William who very much um believes that God is uh, the, the this whole belief in the Essex serpent is just like hysteria, and that the belief in God will get rid of that basically. So she's very much, I believe in science, and he's very much, I believe in faith. Um, and as time goes by, they realise that they kind of attracted to each other, and yeah, it's all about their relationship. And when I say it's all about their relationship. It is all about their relationship. This is called the Essex Serpent, but the Essex Serpent doesn't really feature. It's just kind of the the story that brought them together, that brought her there, and it's hardly referred to at all. So to call it the Essex Serpent, I was a bit like, I was expecting this to be about the serpent, but no, it's got all to do with the serpent to put it bluntly like, it's got nothing to do with it um now there is a major issue that i have with this story and it is well i suppose no two major issues first of all ideas about victorian women and showing a progressive victorian female character 
And what I mean by that is I am all for, you know, breaking the mold and everything and going, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wanting to follow Victorian society. I want to do my own thing and everything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. And then Sarah has Cora, like, in order to show that, she wears trousers. That's a bit of a cliche. Does she have to? And then Cora ends up, like, meeting all these cliche criterias. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Can't you, can't, why? It all, it, there was such promise. And then it just went kind of downhill from there for her i i didn't like cora honestly i see i just i didn't like her whatsoever didn't care about her didn't give a shit really so because of that i'm like i really don't care what you do honey i don't care where you go what anything i did not care whatsoever through the course of this book pretty much about anyone and the other thing that really annoyed me is that everyone, no matter who they are, as soon as they meet Cora, they fall in love with her. Everyone. I am not like, you know, being over the top and saying there's only a couple of, a couple of people. Even her nanny is in love with her. Like... <laughs> Do we have to, do we have to have this? Really? It just, it really bugged the hell out of me. Like, just because she likes to wear trousers, that means everyone has to fall in love. Sorry, there's a massive plane going over my house right now. I've got the window open. Um, just because she breaks the mould, that doesn't mean that everyone is going to fawn over her and, like, go batshit crazy whenever she's around but they do in this book and i'm like why cora's not a nice person she's does the fact that she wear trousers suddenly mean that that means that you can overlook all of her bad qualities i don't think so just it's weird it is a weird book um the ending was a cop out for me entirely for what um Cora decides to do in the end and uh, the actual I don't want to spoil but we'd find out the truth about the Essex serpent um in the course of the book and what the epic Essex serpent the reveal is like, um, that's the best he could come up with. I, I just felt like with this book, if you're going to go, if you're, if you're implying from the back of the, the description that you're going to go deep, you go fucking deep. You don't flutter and then go, ah, there you go. It kind of like how, where the crawdad sings that I had major issue with that book as you if you've seen my review of it you would know it's kind of the same thing if you're gonna go there go there don't don't draw it out and then just have a cop-out ending that is just ridiculous and that's what sarah did with this book unfortunately now when it comes to her actual writing can't deny same with crawdads can't deny her writing she does write well she does know how to set up atmosphere there is always this feeling of darkness like in the air around this story but it's it's very weighty from the start to give an example a comparison laura purcell's books you if you follow my channel you know how i love 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 laura purcell's books and Laura Purcell knows how to write gothic. Sarah doesn't, in my opinion. Laura does have darkness and straight off the bat from first page, it's there, can't deny it. 
but she has it at a certain level and then it gets deeper and darker and more sinister and more frightening as it goes along especially with um the silent companions that was oh my god that book was everything whereas sarah decides to start off this kind of like middle to deep from page one but she doesn't de she doesn't go darker she doesn't develop it further she just sits there so rather having the light and then go to the deeper darker like you would expect you're starting about here and it doesn't move even when you're you know further up on the light let's introduce Cora's character you're stuck with this like weight in your stomach and it doesn't shift it was almost like this sounds a bit I know this sounds harsh but the only way another way to describe it in a way that to make sense kind of like when you have indigestion that feel of, ooh, feeling in your stomach and it just doesn't shift I felt like that with the the darkness that she was trying to allude to all through this book and it never shifted and it never got bleaker and it never went anywhere so to have that deep dark feeling with this story that just kind of flutters along and then the cop-out ending I was like no 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 this has been approached completely wrong I don't like this I don't like this I don't like any of the characters I don't I hate Cora I hate Cora um and she's the one I've got to follow around for this entire book. And it was just draining experience reading this book. Somehow, I think it was that thing that I had persevered for you, uh, through so much. I was like, I've got to finish this book. I've I've got to finish it. So I forced myself to finish this book. But for every day I was a bit like, oh, God, I've got to read this. I've got to read this. Um, I didn't want to physically pick up the book. And if you've got a story that makes me not want to physically pick up the book, that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. So, yeah, this had such potential, but it just didn't work for me. And I do look at this and I'm like, I, I kind of understand why it's popular, but at the same time, it's just, it's a love story that's not even that good. And the ending is awful. And the characters are just terrible. And yeah, just because a woman wears a pair of trousers, that doesn't mean you have to automatically fall in love with her. So yeah. <laughs> it might be a bestseller, but it, it just doesn't have the goods. It's like Crawdad Sings beautiful cover might lure you to like it yes can't deny the author has got skills but the way that they approached those various techniques with characterization and structure and the actual depth of the story was just completely wrong for me and i am i, I want to emphasize that for me i always say this that this is just my opinion it doesn't i'm not you know personally attacking anyone or anything about um or the or any of the authors it just oh it had so much potential and it just didn't work whatsoever for me i mean i wish sarah luck with uh, with her writing career and she's got good she's got some really great good here i mean i forgot to mark um pages but i'll just read like the first paragraph first couple of characters a young man walks down the banks of the black water under the full cold moon he's been drinking the old uh, the old year down to the dregs until his eyes grew sore and his stomach turned and he was tired of the bright lights and bustle i'll just go down to the water he said and kiss the nearest cheek i'll be back before the chimes now he looks east to the turning tide out of uh, out yesterday, slow and dark, and the white gulls gleaming on the waves. It's cold, and he ought to feel it, but he's full of beer, and he's got on his his good thick coat. The collar rasps at the nap of his neck. He feels fuddled and constricted, and his tongue is dry. I'll go for a dip, he thinks. That'll shake me loose. And coming down from the path, stands alone on the shore, where the deep and the dark mud of all the creeks wait on the, for the tide. So as you can see, she's building atmosphere. She's got good literation and 
um the the way that she's pacing it is good and like this opening bit is very interesting it's like oh okay setting the scene i like that and then it just went downhill from there and i'm like oh that's such a disappointment so she's got the goods she has got the goods she just for me approached this completely wrong um and i'd never i'd never read any of her books before as i said this is her second book and i think she's got three or four so i don't know if quality has improved or anything through um her her writing that she's produced so far but yeah i i just feel like she needs to work on some things for me in my opinion you know personally and i actually went on goodreads and this has only got like a i think it's a 3.75 out of five if goodreads has like a score below a four that's concerning that is really concerning so um yeah there are a lot of people who feel the same way as me that it just structurally didn't work cora was not a nice person to have to follow around for like 400 pages um the actual ending wasn't that great it just there's so many wrongs to this but i just feel like if she just like restructured some bits and just spent a bit more time um developing other areas even keeping cora the horrible person that she is and everyone falling in love with her every time they meet her um if she just improved on certain areas it could have been a better book but yeah it just didn't work for me um now there is a drama of the book um that is being done by apple tv i can't recall exactly when it's released i don't have apple tv so i i'm not able to watch it the trailer looks quite interesting with uh, Sasha ronan and i think it's tom hiddleston um and yeah it looks like it's captured the the book well but i do wonder is this a case of that they're going to be true to the book or are they going to change things because obviously as i've talked about many many times adaptation means there's going to be stuff that's going to be cut there's going to be stuff that's that's going to be added um there's going to be some things that are going to be rearranged and will that improve the story and without seeing it just watching the trailer and what i know from having read this book i bloody hope so um because i feel like it needs an improvement sorry that's my opinion um yeah it just didn't float my boat so those are my thoughts on the essex serpent by sarah perry and now it's time for my usual questions so would i read this again no 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 i am i'm done with the essex serpent um would i oh sorry i'm just grabbing something for the next bit um would i uh recommend it to anyone oh uh, probably not I just uh I I mean it's got potential it's got, I think but I think it's an acquired taste so maybe I'd say look if you want to give it a go give it a go but I wasn't that fond of it uh would I read any more of Sarah's work <sighs> knowing that she's got the goods but she just didn't quite present itself in a way that I liked I will give her give her writing another go i feel confident that she's going to produce something that i will like in the future but not right now so i'm i'm i i'd be interested to see like in her in her next book um see what reviews are like for that and consider looking at her stuff in the future but right now i'm not interested in reading her first or her third book or I can't remember if it's three or four books, but any other books that she's, that's currently available by Sarah Perry, I'm not interested, but maybe off in the future, I would be interested. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on The Essex Serpent. Have you read this book? I'd love to know what you think. Leave me a comment in the comments box below. Leave the thumbs up, thumbs down, tally up to you, let you decide. And I'll be back with my thoughts on my next book, my <laughs> next review, should I say, which will be very shortly, which is The Life of Pi uh, by Jan Martel. 
So I will see you then. <laughs> Bye.